Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I wanted to uh, do a how-to video, how to polar align your mount. Um, we get lots of questions about that. Uh, all the different mounts we've got, the equatorial mounts, they all work kind of the same way. You've got to point this axis at the, the North Pole in order for it to track correctly. So let's go step by step through um, the procedure. And uh, of course, you'll want to read the manual in your specific mount uh, because there might be slight differences. Uh, the, like I said, the general procedure is the same, but the polar scope might be slightly different in one mount versus another. So read through your manual, watch the video, and you'll be polar aligned in no time. So the general idea, uh, like I said, is this axis here needs to be pointing at the North Pole. Uh, a lot of the telescopes, or a lot of the mounts, have a built-in polar scope with a reticle inside that helps you uh, find the right spot in the sky. So that's what we're going to be working with. Uh, I've got the Sirius mount here. Uh, this procedure would work with the Skyview Pro if you have the optional polar scope uh, attached. Uh, the Atlas, the Atlas Pro, Sirius Pro, HDX, kind of pretty much any equatorial mount is going to have some variation of this procedure. And it's a very similar um, procedure. Basically, you want to line up the latitude of the mount, which is the height of this axis, and then the uh, azimuth of this axis, uh, left and right. So it's looking right at the North Pole. There's a hole through this axis, and the polar reticle, which is basically a little telescope built into the end here, will allow you to see Polaris and get it in the right spot. Now, if we were lucky, Polaris would be right on the North Pole, and you just point the center of this axis right at Polaris, and you're done. Uh, unfortunately, Polaris is a little bit off. It's not perfectly aligned with the North Pole. I think it's something like nine-tenths of a degree off. So, and of course, Polaris rotates around the North Pole, as does everything else. So depending on the time of night, the time of season, Polaris will be on a different side of the North Pole, and you've got to figure that out in order to get this thing really accurately aligned. That's where the reticle inside comes into play. There's a couple of different kinds of reticles, depending on which mount you've got and how old it is. Uh, basically, there's two. A, uh, pictogram style with uh, a picture of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia in the reticle, and you're supposed to rotate the RA axis until those two constellations in the reticle match up with the actual alignment of the real Big Dipper and Cassiopeia in the sky. And then the other method is with a reticle with a, it looks like a circular railroad track. And uh, you use some uh, either online calculators or some apps for your smartphone that you can download off the App Store or Google Play, and it will tell you exactly where around that railroad track Polaris is supposed to sit. So uh, either method works very well. They're both very accurate. Uh, you'll have to decide which one you want to use based on what uh, reticle is in your mount, and I'll go through both uh, procedures. The first thing you have to do, regardless of which reticle, is get Polaris somewhere in the field of view of the polar axis. Uh, the method for doing that, uh, on the Sirius mount at least, you've got these large bolts here and here. This is the, it's a push-push system for the altitude or latitude of the mount. And then on the side down here, uh, here's one of the knobs. This is a push and push system on the other side. Uh, you probably can't see this one over here. But that adjusts the left and right axis of the mount in order to position Polaris somewhere in the field of view. So uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, obviously, it's not night right now. We're, we're faking this because we're videoing during the day. But uh, we'll have some s uh, slides in the video to kind of show you exactly what I'm doing and what it looks like through the polar scope. Now, the first thing you'll notice is I don't have a telescope on here. This, this is actually the e uh, an easier procedure to perform before you even put the telescope on, prob probably even before you put the weight on. But I've got the weight on here now, so that's fine. Um, if you have a really long telescope and you're looking through the polar axis, it, you might actually bump your head on the telescope down here. So I like to do this without the telescope attached. Um, it works great if you're on a solid surface like concrete or a patio. Um, but if you're on really soft grass and you do the polar alignment and then you put the telescope on, it might sink a little bit, uh, ruining that, that precision that you achieved. So uh, again, this method is best for putting on a, uh, on a solid surface. If you are going to be on a soft surface, it might be better to put everything on there and get the weight uh, pushing down and maybe kind of solidly push down on the on the telescope in order to sink it in and get it uh, uh, to the point where it's not going to be sinking any further. So first step, rotate the deck axis until you can see the hole in the polar alignment channel. The, the shaft that comes through here um, has a hole in it and you can only use the polar scope when you've got a clear view through the axis. So I'm going to rotate it here. It might be at some angle around uh, the deck axis. So just Look down through the top, get it aligned so you can see through it, and now you're ready to look through 
the polar scope here in order to get Polaris up here. The next step is to rough align Polaris. Just get Polaris somewhere in the field of view of this axis. And I'm going to do that by first uh, roughly getting my latitude set. Uh, here in Cupertino, California, we're at 30, around 37, 38 degrees. Uh, so again, this is a push, push system. So I'm going to loosen the top one here. And the whole axis is, is resting on this bottom bolt here. And you can actually see that if I loosen this a lot, I can rotate this thing up and down along that axis. So when it settles into its position, it's butted up against this bolt. So I've loosened the top one, and then I'm going to tighten the bottom one. And I think if you can see, it will slowly raise the polar axis as it goes. If you've got a lot of counterweight down here, it might actually help to kind of push up on it at the same time, just so you're not putting all your weight on this bolt, or maybe take the counterweight shaft off, or the counterweight off. Uh, but as I'm rotating it here, the polar axis is going upwards. So that's probably way too high. Yeah, I'm at 40 something degrees here. So let's bring it back down. 37, 38, right about there. And I'm going to lower the counterweight shaft so I have clear. There we go. Now, eyeball Polaris in the real sky up here. And at this point, you're going to want to kick the tripod legs, rotate it around until this axis is lined up with Polaris and you're at the right latitude scale here. And again, this latitude scale actually only works if your uh, tripod is, is basically level. Um, if your tripod is five degrees uh, out of uh, level to the north, then this reticle scale will be five degrees off in that direction. So it doesn't really matter. You actually don't have to have your, uh, your um, tripod perfectly level. You just have to get Polaris in the right spot in the reticle pattern. But it, it does help to start out when you're doing the adjustments to have everything level because one adjustment won't play off the other. The up and down axis will be independent of the left and right axis when you're doing it if everything's level. Okay, so pretending again it's night, I've lined this thing up so it's due north and Polaris is right up here. I've got it at about the right latitude. I'm going to then come down here and look through the polar scope and hopefully Polaris will be somewhere in the field of view. If it's not, you're going to have to kind of look off to the side and see, oh, you know what, I'm a little bit high or I'm a little to the left and kick the tripod legs until you get Polaris somewhere in the field of view. Now that Polaris is somewhere in the field of view, you're ready to do the uh, fine alignment, which is getting it in the proper spot in the reticle pattern itself. All right, now it's time to get Polaris in the proper spot in the reticle itself. And here's where dif uh, we differentiate between the two reticle patterns. So first I will talk about the reticle that includes the little picture of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia. Uh, that reticle pattern is geared towards northern hemisphere users. The other reticle pattern, the one with the uh, train tracks, can actually be used in both northern and southern uh, hemisphere locations. So when I'm talking about Polaris, obviously I'm talking about northern hemisphere stuff. So that's what we're going to focus on first with the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia reticle. OK, so remember how I said that Polaris is not exactly on the North Pole, um, and it, it needs to be slightly offset in order to be perfectly aligned. Well. In the real sky, if you look up, uh, there's a pattern that's formed with those uh, two constellations and Polaris. So you've got the Big Dipper, Polaris, and then Cassiopeia. And they all, they all form kind of a line um, that rotates around each other. Polaris, obviously, or the, the North Pole is in the middle. And Cassiopeia and the Big Dipper are always on opposite sides, rotating around uh, in sync. And for uh, different times of night, for different times of seasons, they'll be in a different orientation, but you use that uh, pattern in order to figure out which side of Polaris the North Pole is on. And that's what the polar alignment reticle with the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia uh, help you to do. Um, if I'm thinking about it right, the North Pole is on the side of Polaris that's closer towards the Big Dipper. So if you look up in the sky and you see the Big Dipper here, and then there's Polaris, you know Cassiopeia will be down over here. And they're, all, they're from our latitude at 38 degrees, they're always uh, circumpolar, so they're always up. Um, if the Big Dipper is straight above Polaris, that means Cassiopeia is probably scooting down towards the horizon, and it might be a little bit difficult to see it. But the point is, with the reticle, you can see the angle of the handle of the Big Dipper, so it always helps you figure out exactly uh, what orientation to have it in. So how do you actually use the reticle to find Polaris with the uh, 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 pictures of Cassiopeia and the Big Dipper? You can't see those constellations in the field of view of the polar scope. They're far too wide of a field. They're out of the field of view. But the reticle basically tells you this side, out this direction, is the Big Dipper, and out this direction is Cassiopeia. So what you do, walk around this side, 
you look through the polar scope, and then you look at the real sky and you see what the orientation of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia. So let's just, for this uh, experiment here, let's just pretend the Big Dipper is over here, Polaris is right there, and Cassiopeia is down in this um, uh, quadrant of the sky. So I look through here and the Big Dipper is down at the bottom. So what I have to do is unlock the RA axis. Actually, what I'm going to do is take off the counterweight because this is actually the easiest to do without the counterweight on here. You want to rotate the RA shaft until the pattern of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia matches with what you're seeing in the real sky. So, okay, there, uh, the Big Dipper is up here, Cassiopeia is down here. In the real sky, same thing, up here, down here. Now, when you look in the middle of the reticle, you'll see a big crosshair. That's um, where the North Pole is supposed to be. And then a little circle around it with an offset circle on that bigger circle. That's where you have to put Polaris. And assuming that in the reticle, the constellations are in the same plane as the constellations in the real sky, you put Polaris in that offset circle using the, latit the uh, latitude adjustments here and here, and the azimuth adjustments here and here. Just slowly tweak them. Push one side, loosen the other side. Loosen one side, push the other side, until you get Polaris right in that circle, and then lock them down, verifying that Polaris is still in that circle, and you're very well polar aligned. Now, in that example, uh, I think you'll notice I had the, uh, the polar axis at some angle like this in order to get the rotation of the picture of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia uh, into the same orientation as the real sky. However, different times of night, different times of season, it can be at any angle around this thing, even upside down. That's why it's best to do this part without the telescope on top, because under normal uh, situations you don't ever go past horizontal with a counterweight shaft. You're never going to be observing with the counterweight shaft up. But in order to get the reticle oriented right, in order to find where Polaris is around that circle, uh, half the year, the uh, at the same time of night, the orientation of the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia might be up like this or at some strange angle. So just do that once, get Polaris in the right spot once the angle is correct, and then bring it back down. And now you can attach your counterweight, your telescope, and everything else, and you're perfectly set to go. All right, so that's the method for aligning using the uh, picture of Cassiopeia and the Big Dipper. Now, the other uh, reticle that you may have, depending on the uh, time frame you got your mount uh, and which exact polar scope you're using, has a uh, railroad track circle uh, around a center mark. Uh, that is a system that does not use the rotation of the RA axis. So you can't just go outside and look at the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia and figure out which side it's on. Uh, you'd need to go online or in some of those smartphone apps and download a uh, polar alignment reticle calculator. It will basically give you that clock phase, which is the same as that uh, railroad track in there from 12 o'clock on top, 6 o'clock on the bottom. And it tells you where around the clock phase Polaris should be set in order to uh, be perfectly polar aligned. The advantage of that is you don't have to rotate this thing into some weird angle. You basically just align the reticle so 12 is on top, 6 is on the bottom, and then just do the adjustment until Polaris is in the right spot. It also works in the southern hemisphere um, uh, just as well. So uh, where you don't have the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia, in the southern hemisphere you can use the, the clock phase. So with the reticle, once you've determined the uh, position of Polaris around that clock face, do the same thing you did before. Adjust the mount with the latitude adjustments, loosening one, tightening the other to raise it, or doing the opposite, loosening that one, tightening this one to lower it. Same thing with azimuth, tightening one while loosening the other to rotate it left or right. Do those adjustments until Polaris is right on the correct spot in the railroad track, uh, and now you're perfectly polar aligned. All right, so I've shown you how to do it with the two different reticle patterns. Now that you're aligned, it's time to attach the counterweight, attach your telescope, and don't kick the tripod or don't move it anymore. If you were to pick up the tripod and rotate it or move it to another part of the yard, you've just destroyed everything you've done, and you're going to have to realign um, uh, the mount in order to uh, correctly uh, track things in the sky. When you move the telescope on top of it, just as a refresher for the, how an equatorial mount works, Let's say you wanted to, uh, here's the telescope, I'll just pretend my hand is aimed, uh, we're, we're facing north, uh, the counterweight shaft down. If I wanted to move the telescope so it's pointing upwards, I do not move the latitude of the mount. Remember, this always has to point at Polaris. In order to move the telescope, you unlock the deck 
and the RA axis, and you move it in RA this way, and then in deck this way, and now I'm looking north in the sky. You can position the telescope anywhere in the sky, looking south, looking north, looking over here to the east. Um, you can move it on top of that, and notice this still always points towards Polaris, no matter where the telescope is pointing. This has to stay in that axis, otherwise the mount will not track accurately at all. Now, having said all that, this is a pretty accurate way to get it very nicely aligned. Uh, that would be perfectly good for visual use, for short exposure stuff, moon and planets. If your goal is long exposure photography, you might want to go one step further and do like a declination drift. Um, that is a much more complicated procedure. If you do an internet search for declination drift telescope, there's a bunch of procedures. It basically uh, follows a star in the south and then in the east or west over five or ten minutes at really high power and you'll notice the drift in one direction. That tells you if you're just slightly above or below Polaris or slightly to the left or right of Polaris. Um, and it can fine tune it even further than the polar alignment reticle could. The last thing I wanted to mention is um, I didn't talk about the calibration of the reticle inside the polar housing itself. Everything we've done gets you pretty darn uh, good accurate alignment and like I said it's good enough for visual and short exposure stuff maybe even uh, with some of the newer CMOS cameras if you're doing two or three minute exposures that's all you'd need but if you want the last bit of accuracy out of the polar alignment reticle you'll want to calibrate the reticle uh, so you know the reticle is looking straight down the center of the uh, rotational axis of the RA axis here. So if that's something you're interested in doing, getting that last bit of accuracy out of the polar alignment reticle, take a look at our other video, Calibrating the Polar Alignment Reticle. Now having said all that about how to use the polar scope, if you want to skip all that and not bend down, look through the polar scope, uh, figure out which direction uh, Polaris is from the Big Dipper, you could always use our P1 polar alignment camera to bypass all of it. It's a little camera that attaches onto the front here, attaches to your laptop, and then uses software to image the area of the sky around Polaris and tells you exactly where uh, the, the North Pole is and how to align it really quickly and easily. So if you like that idea, take a look at our other video uh, on the uh, P1, the Orion Starshoot P1 polar alignment camera. All right, well, there you have it. That's a tutorial on how to get your equatorial mount polar lines. Uh, I have the Sirius mount here, but again, this works with pretty much any equatorial mount and any version of a, of a polar alignment scope that uses one of those two reticles. Uh, I hope it's helped you and gotten you more accurate uh, tracking with your mount. Thank you very much. Clear skies.